In Consumer Corner, we take a look at trends and products creating a buzz here in China. On today's show, we'll discuss how many government officials are still illegally using government loopholes to purchase personal and commercial property. For more than 40 years, the welfare housing distribution system that served the Chinese government has been officially canceled in 1998. Then 10 years after, right up to the present day, it seems that Chinese public servants are still getting kickbacks off of the vestiges of this dilapidated system. These days, the discrepancy in money that the public servants need to pay is about $800 per square meter, and it's generally considered economically affordable housing. While in 1998, such houses were simply given for free. A public servant indicated that if they were to purchase a home within the area of 120 square meters adjacent to the Third Ring Road, only $96,129 would be sufficient enough to buy, while the commodity house's prices in contrast are $8,000 per square meter, equaling $961,290 in total. That means common citizens pay almost 10 times more than that of public servants. Although public servants' so-called economically affordable houses still has to obey the same rules as other price-limited housing, officials have the perk of only a five-year restriction period. Now the housing price in China's major cities still remains high and the price-earning ratio is well past dangerous levels. Despite the developers and experts who blame the overloaded housing prices on high taxes and real estate industry, the root cause is uneven distribution of housing resources. It has been confirmed that the housing areas for sale and construction in China is nearly 4 billion square meters, which can satisfy about 120 million people's housing demands. According to one report, the housing price has been rising over 500 percent within the last six years, while personal income growth in the last decade was only about 15 percent. Ten years ago, it would only take most citizens around 10 to 20 years to be able to buy a house given their incomes. These days, the average family would have to spend every penny's worth of 50 to 60 years total income merely to purchase a single house at the price of $8,000 per square meter. Many of those public servants even possess multiple homes and some, of course, even own commercial housing. Under these circumstances, it's a bit tongue-in-cheek to say at these prices, they're literally getting these properties for a steal. Theoretically, supported by taxpayer dollars, these public servants indeed should be provided housing by the state. Three years later, the once heatedly debated Housing Security Act still remains at a standstill. Why? Once again, they've got their mind on their money and their money on their minds. So how can anyone expect those who currently enjoy housing windfalls to cut off the hand that feeds them? It would be foolish indeed to expect them to pay building taxes all by themselves. Many taxpayers disagreed about the housing welfare public servants should be afforded. One netizen posted on his microblog, quote, The public servants enjoy more than housing welfare. Other benefits like using government cars for private purposes, free medical services, and so on. Just take housing, for example. In the 80s, when they got married, they were provided housing called a wedding house. When free housing welfare was canceled, they were given the houses at bargain prices. Most of them took advantages of the policy and possess at least more than one dwelling. Some netizens sarcastically posted on the internet that, quote, Considering such that the princely benefits that public servants enjoy, if you are a male, you should fight to the death for the position of a public servant. If you are a female, you should fight to the death to marry a public servant. However, some people believe that such corrupt kickbacks provided for the public servants simply isn't true. One netizen posted on his microblog about a friend that used to be a public servant, quote, I feel that I must stand up on behalf of public servants. The way I see it, public servants don't have it all that great. They earn a salary that's less than $800 a month with almost no reserve funds, while the pressure of the job far exceeds that of ordinary people. Many graduates from the most famous colleges in China fought for the right to be a public servant just a few years ago, but now most of them have since left their positions to look for ways to greater improve their standard of living. Whether a public servant enjoys housing welfare or not, the main principle guiding the discussion should be about the inequities of resource distribution. If the true aim of the state is to focus truly on how to equally distribute public resources and generally strive to guarantee the basic quality of life for both public servants and the common man, then somewhere down the line the corruption should and must ultimately be eradicated.